Hello class, today what we're going to be doing is the advanced array assignment with sorts and searches. And this is all posted on Box, and this is my checklist basically that I wrote last class, so we're going to go through it line by line. I also downloaded the two codes, sort test and bubble sort test example. I'm going to start with the bubble sort example. That's going to be my main code that I'm going to be working with. First we're going to do is we're going to pick a primitive variable, that type that isn't int, and I'm going to use that for everything. The reason why I have to use it for everything is because we're going to make four 1D arrays and then make those four 1D arrays into a 2D array. So they have to be the same type, otherwise we're going to have typecasting issues and I don't want to get into that. So my type that I'm going to pick is, I'm going to do an int so that you guys have to do something other than an int. I recommend long, it's just the easiest way to do it. I'm gonna create four 1D arrays. So I'm gonna go R1, copy this line of code, paste, paste, paste. So now I have four arrays, I need to name them differently. One, two, three, four. This is very bad, you should not do this. I'm doing it because I'm lazy and I want you guys to know where they are vertically. So I picked my primitive variable type, so now what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually just gonna delete this, and I recommend you doing this, because once you achieve a goal, delete it and then move on. So I'm now it's gonna save this as, so that I don't mess up. Declare four 1D arrays of length X. My length X is two, four. I'm gonna actually decrease this by one, so I have that, and I need to declare 2D array of length X, so two, four, six is my length. So I need to do a int r2d1, because I need to make two of them. So I'm just declaring them here, I'm not instantiating them, of height 4. So we can put a equals new int array of 6, 4, x then y. So I just need to copy this, a her. And then I have two 2D arrays, so I'm good there. Of length x, which is six, because I have six elements here. And uh sorry, of yeah, length of four rows. Sorry, yeah, four rows. Then I want to use a for loop to set values. So this one I'm actually gonna be resetting. So I'm gonna these are my default values that I know I don't want them to be, so now I have to go and do the for loop. So this for loop right here almost does it. So I want to take this value, I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to put it right over here under comments. So I'm going to go for every int my value, colon, double colon I think it is, in array 1. So for every value in array 1, I want to do something. That something is going to say, so I'm going to make a for loop so the array goes from 0 to length, increasing by 1. And then I want to set the values, and this one I'm going to set random values. So we're going to say r sub 1 sub i equals math.random times plus. And let's make it 101. So any value from 1 to 100. Compile it. And this I need to typecast to a int. There we go, no syntax there. So now I have a for loop to set all the values to the array, which this should be super easy because you already have it in your array program. So doing it here should just be a breeze. So the next one I'm going to cut, paste, and say use a while loop to set values for a different array. So again, while. So that means I need to first declare a variable int x equals 0 while x is less than array dot one length but this is array two because I'm operating on value two I need to do something else so let's just copy this line and go 50 and let's start at 50 and now I need to do a do while so comment out do while basically same thing as the while except say put this here and do and I need to increase x so x plus plus and let's make this y y y x so y plus plus 
And now I need to statically assign, which I already did up here. So let's change this. I want to go 1, 3, 3, 7, 22, 42. Let's go 9, 9, 9. Let's go 1, 1, 1. And let's go 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So now I statically assign my values right there. Use a single for loop to assign a column worth of data each iteration into the 2D array for the one for 1D array. So basically what I need to do is take all of these values and throw them into R sub D1. I need to make a for loop to do this. So what that means is I'm just going to set up so I just set up one. You guys have to set up the other three. Cut this, put it into here so I comment out. And I need to set up a for loop. So for int z equals zero. Z is less than R one dot length and z plus plus i need to operate on it like so this right here is my array that i'm working with the value of z of zero the first iteration of it is r sub one of z and what this will do is it'll go through and static assign each value in r sub 1 into the first row of r sub 2d 1. r sub 2d 1. And then allow it so that I can just do another line of code for each array and be all set. Then I'm going to create my own sort routine on a 1d array. What you should do is you should open up a paint file and create your pseudocode, which I'm going to require you to turn in because I want to make sure that the one that you give me is the one that you made. So you have numbers, so I'm going to start off with 2, 4, 8, 1, 0, 3. I have six numbers. Now what I want to do is, my algorithm is find the min value, go through, find the min and max. My min is 0, my max is 8. So then I call two swap functions, so I put 0 here, I put 8 here, and then this goes two, four, one, three. I rewrite the array. And now I basically have these values set and I have to do that again, min and max. So I have zero, one, two, three, four. And then I have to run it again on two and three, but two and three stay the same because they were already sorted. They're both my min and max. And so that's my custom sort. So what I then have to do is I have to use that code, so I should probably have it open over here. So I have my code, and what I want to do is create a for loop, which is right here, basically the same one. On the outside, what I need to do is I need to create another for loop because I need to trace through this length divided by two times. So I need another variable, so this is just going to be xx equals zero when xx is less than r1 dot length divided by 2 because and I round down because that last value is going to be placed if it's a odd number the middle value is going to be both max and min so I don't need to run it and then xx plus plus this needs to go inside this so it's a nested for loop just because I need to go through so my first iteration, I'm going through find max min. The find max min is right here, so I'm going to label this find max min, and I'm going to label this repeat half of length times. Because I'm setting both max and min, I'm setting two per operation. So now what I need to do is I need to set up a local variable. No, yeah, int temp. I need to set up a int max. I need to set up a int min. And I'm making these all local variables so they disappear after each loop, but they need to operate outside here because I'm rerunning the loop. Yes. There we go. So we have that set. So now I need to go through and find these values. So this array finds these values, so then I still need to do stuff here. So I need to do the swaps down here. So I need to say if, and let's start these out to be zero. Ooh, and this to be, oh, I should probably make these negative. No, 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 no. So my max is really small, my min is really big, just to make sure these default values are swapped with actual valid values from the array. 
hopefully these values are not the new max even though they're not in there I also need to take in consideration that my zero value I will be moving in every time I will also be moving in on the end so I'm going to do r sub length minus my xx value starts out at zero then one so I decrease by one and let's put parentheses around that even though it does work I just want it to be sure so then I want to say if my min value is greater than my current value of r sub one so r sub one of i my min value is greater than my current value of the array position that means I want to say min equals r sub one and then the same thing goes for my max however max is just the other way so max is less than then I want to set if max is less than that then I want to say my new max is the my new value and I go through the entire array and that sets that I don't have to change anything else and then I need to do the swaps so what I want to say is if my max does not equal my max that I set up here which means if there was an actual swap then I need to do three things the first thing I need to do is store the current value for the swap position and I need these array values don't I so I need to set two more variables so I need int max array position and I also need this for my min array position so that means inside here I need to do two things and inside here I need to do two things so my max array position will now equal xx and my min array position will now equal xx Ooh, sorry no i because i is my index of the array so that means if max down here if max does not equal my default value then I need to do a swap so my swap that I need to do is first I need to say temp equals max and then I need to say my xx value so r sub 1 r1 sub xx is my min value so this value right here is my max array position minus one because r sub one length minus zero it would be out of bounds so I need to subtract one from that to get my max so my temp equals this so that means I need to take my end value and set it to my max array position which is r sub 1 sub that equals and my that is my max array position so then erases my max I stored my max I erase my max and then I need to call back the max value from temp now the nice thing about this is I could even take away the temp variable because I already have it stored under max because this is a these two right here is basically the element in the array so I don't need temp so it, because max is already there so I'm just gonna say max equals that so my max array position which is my value of max is then replaced with my ending position minus one my ending position minus one becomes my max so I need to do the same thing for my min so min is min and this will now just be xx because it's my minimum value my minimum value will just be zero zero or one one as I increase through and if my min does not equal nine 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 let us see if this works so I need a for loop so I should use an advanced for loop I need a system dot out so I need a system dot out before and after where I'm printing out the value of R so I need a for loop for 
every value my value in R sub 1. I want to do this where I print out my value. And then I need to do the same thing down here. And inside here, I need to say sorted. And I make sure this is print line. And I need to put up here unsorted. And I need a standard print line to separate the two. So max array position, I want to be equal to R sub length minus one. And my min array position is just going to be equal to XX every time, which this might be the same value. Boom. Unsorted is right there, and my sorted list does not work. So it looks like I'm setting my max to be my min as well. And that's probably because that's what my code does. Yep. Right here should be min. Custom sort made. You can't use that sort, obviously. Um, you can make your own. I do need pseudocode just like this, as we did before for the binary search. So I created my own sort on the fly. And so now we have create my own sort D on a 1D array. Done. And I also gave code there, so I'm done with that. Now I need to do an auto sort, which means I just need to call bubble sort. So bubble sort in an array, and it doesn't return anything because this is a pointer, so anything done inside actually changes that current pointer. So I need to call bubble sort on the next array. So first things first is I need to print the value of the array unsorted. So I want unsorted. I also want a print line in between here to separate them. Unsorted of R sub 2. And then I want a sorted of R sub 2 there. Sorted R sub 2. And now I need to call this bubble sort. So all I need to do is call the function bubble sort on R sub 2 as my parameter. And now when I compile and run this, please realize this is going to be the second one. And this is the second one right here. R sub 2, R sub 2, R sub 2. So now when I run this, boom. The initial value is unsorted, then sorted. Notice they're different from above. So I have my bubble sort done. You need to do insertion sort. And I'm not going to help you on that one. Use a single for loop to assign a column worth of data for the 2D array. So you need to again do this sort of thing for the sorted values of all four sorted into the new array. So this is the sorted array and this is the unsorted array. And now once you make the sorted array, you need to run the binary search. And the binary search is right here. I want you to figure out how to do that. I'm not going to help you on that. And then I'll put each unsorted array. And then I want you to change five random values in the 2D array, then reprint. I'm not going to show you how to do Actually, I will I'll show you to do one thing. So if I were to change one random value in this array right here, I would just go something like this, where I say R sub 2D sub 3 and 2 equals 1. Except random values in the 2D array change five random values in random locations, mind you, because that's random values. And then make a loop to give me the sum of the unsorted array that you should be able to do. And then make a nested loop to give me the sum of the 2D array, which that, again, you should be able to do because you're just traversing the array. I would recommend doing um, for the 2D array, I would recommend using something like this. So if you do the for loop for this, R sub 1 is a 1D array. That'll do nothing. But if I do the same exact thing, and I want to operate on this, I could do, instead of R sub 1, I could do the 2D array of row 0. So I would need to then do int yy equals 0 when yy is less than my array of 
2D dot length and then YY plus plus and that will traverse through horizontally so I'm going to be accessing values like this the every value in the row it'll go through from start to end and I think that's pretty much it you should be able to do everything from here because the stuff I didn't explain I explained something similar to it and sorry I'm not posting this code um, you have to figure it out on your own good luck have a good one I will see you later